Fiscal Court on December the 15th of 2022. It's about 9.32 a.m. Uh, at this time, uh, Magister Rahill, would you mind leading us in the invocation, please, sir? Please bow your head. Father, we just love you today, Lord. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the breath we took when we woke up this morning. It is an absolute blessing to have that, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless this court, Lord. We ask you to bless each and every man and woman in this room, Lord, with financial and, and physical blessings, Lord. And we ask for wisdom, Lord. Your word always says, if we ask for wisdom, you give it to us abundantly, Lord. Every day we need your wisdom and your salvation and your love, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Right here. At this, at this time, Sam, if you would call the roll, please. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rahill? Yes. Ed Summers? Yes. 
Thank you, Sam. Um, Treasurer's transfer report. Can Ann, please? Yes, Judge, that was stated for December the 15th of 2022. We are approved. motion. Second. Got a motion by First District Magistrate Mitchell, a second by Fourth District Magistrate Ray Hill to approve the Treasurer's transfer report as presented. Sam, call the roll, please. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Presentation and approval of all bills. Make a motion to approve all bills. Second. Got a motion by Fourth District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by Third District Magistrate Laswell to approve the bills as presented. Sam, call the roll, please. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. The Treasurer's, tra the treasurer's Report, can I end? Yes, Judge. That included your appropriation condition report, your revenue condition report, and a financial statement through November the 30th of 2022 for your approval. Yes, ma'am. Second. Got a motion by First District Magistrate Mitchell, a second by Third District Magistrate Laswell to approve the Treasurer's report as presented. Sam, call the roll, please. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Approval of the minutes for the December 6, 2022 meeting of the Bull County Fiscal Court. Just make a motion to approve the minutes for December 6. Second. Got a motion by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by 3rd District Magistrate Laswell to approve the minutes of the December 6, 2022 meeting as presented. Sam, call the roll, please. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Motion carried. At this time, we have three presentations. We will start with the uh, first one from the county clerk. Uh, the county clerk is. On vacation, so I'm still money up for You can come over here. Uh, <laughs> please. <laughs> that way for, for, for clarity. We've got to ask you a lot of questions. Yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I know you do too. Okay, the first thing we <clears throat> need to do is amend our 22 budget. I know it's later on down in the, the agenda, but we do need to get that done. And there's three forms that need to be approved. We just moved some money around to make the auditors get those, make them happy. So that's all that we're doing on that. So there's three forms, the budget, the order for um, the deputy salaries, and then the third thing was the uh, expenditures. Okay. You just need a motion to approve those? Three separate. There has to be three separate. What, three separate motions on it? Okay. motion on that. Second. We had a motion by First District Magistrate Mitchell, a second by Third District Magistrate uh, Laswell to approve. Re rephrase that first one one more time for, for clarity. We just had to amend the budget to move some money around to, for the um, appropriations for the auditor so she was everything was in line. Got it. That's it, Sam. You got it? All right. Sam Color Road. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. yes. Motion carried? Okay. And then the lastly we need to approve our twenty twenty three budget. I mailed it out or emailed it out to you all. Sorry for the late. It was we were but it's pretty much the same as last year, just a few we adjusted a few things and um, we requested it be approved. And they still need to make the other two motions on twenty twenty two. The uh, all right. The other two, thank you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sorry. I think we need a motion on the order and allowance for deputies. Yeah. Right. Make a motion. For the order of the order. The orders. For orders setting the maximum salary for deputies. Right. Yep. Got a motion by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by 1st District Magistrate. Mitchell to approve the orders of the adjusted salary for the deputies. Sam Call Row. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rayho? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. And the third one again. Order authorizing expenditures. Got it. I'll make a motion to authorize it. Second. I got a met I got a <laughs> Fourth District Magistrate Ray Hill. Third District Magistrate Laswell. To 
the expenditures? Yes. Got it. Sam Colorado. <laughs> Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rahill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Now for the 2023 budget, like I said, it stayed pretty much the same. We did raise a bit for those salaries, but everything else is pretty much close to what we had in the past. So. Yeah. What, what, what percentage did that go up to you now? Not the exact percentage now. Okay. It's so close compared to last year. It's pretty close to it. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yes. I'm making a motion to approve the 23 budget. Second. Got a motion of 4th District Magistrate May Rayhill. A second by 3rd District Magistrate Laswell to approve the, the uh, 2023 budget for the Bull County Clerk as presented. Sam Colorado. Mr. Rayhill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Now we need the 2023 annual order approved. Okay. Make a motion to approve the 23 annual order. Second. Got a motion by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by 3rd District Magistrate Laswell to approve the 2023 annual order. Sam Colorado. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rahill? Yes. Motion carried? Yes. Thank you. And lastly, the order, 2023 order for expenditures. We need that approved also. Got a motion by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by 3rd District Magistrate Laswell to approve the 2023 order of expenditures for the county clerk's office. Sam call the roll, please. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rahill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, ma'am. Okay. You work here at Absolutely. And I'm sort of glad he did. Um, <laughs> At this time, uh, we have a few presentations. Uh, I'm going to save sort of the, I'm, I'm going to do this in, in, a, in a different order. I uh, have some congratulations up here too. I'd like to start first with Magistrate Mitchell. And, and Magistrate, it's, it's been a pleasure working with you the last four years. Okay, well thank you. In my few years of service, here's a, uh, Something to hang on your wall for you. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And hold up all your uh, local government books and all the uh, accolades for uh, you as well. well. Thanks a lot. Now, I served government now for over 40 years, 1982. So a long, long time. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long time. I don't tell you how old I am, but I've been around a long time. But I appreciate this very much, and I've enjoyed working with, with the people over the years. So I do appreciate that so much. And again, thank you. Thank you, Magister. Now, if I need to help you up, I will. So if you'll stand up, Magistrate Laswell, please, sir. Uh, and, and Joe, all the years, thank you for everything that you've done for our community, our county, mm -hmm. all the way back from the early days of emergency services to, right. to today. But I uh, can't thank you enough for the, uh, your wisdom and what you've helped us get to in the last four years to move our community forward. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Joe, well, this, this is beginning to be a, I'm just missing one here. So, hey, it's okay. I can, I can speak in my dad's voice, right, Nathan? <laughs> So anyway, hey, we got off to a rough start, but it's been great <laughs> always do. Thank you, sir. And I can't tell you how much you've really helped us with literally the roads, the mess, and planning zone. And your what you brought to the table is it's been it's been great to work with. And uh, don't be a stranger. And if you fall off the horse one time, just get back on it and ride it again. Okay? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a great day. I tell you what, it's a good fun. Thank you, guys. And one more. 
I'll be seeing this guy around a lot, but Rob, if you have just a minute, please, sir. Uh, 20 years worth of seeing around and, and being around you, so can't tell you how much we appreciate you in local government and your wisdom, and it's just been a great. Appreciate it. It's been my pleasure and honor, and I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be around. I'm still going to be involved, so this is my home. This is where I grew up. Keep serving. There you go. Keep leadership of the county going. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Tamara, Tamara Ross couldn't be here today, but I do have a longtime friend. Hey, Barry. Come on here. But this guy here is a surprise. It is a surprise. Hell, <laughs> he's been around me for years. You know, I'm full of surprises. So, I've known this guy for, anyway, a, a hair long time. Our hair is different colors so over 40, almost 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've been great for our community. We don't want you to go nowhere. Uh, please stay active. But this is something you can hang up with pride. We're, we're truly appreciative of working with you the last four years. It's been a uh, it's been a treat. I appreciate it. I mean, even though we had to have some interlocal agreements, the handshake agreements is always the best. Absolutely, so, absolutely. I appreciate your words more than I do the plaque to hang on my wall. It's okay. And uh, I appreciate Little County. I appreciate Mount Washington involvement. And never have I served, and I've served a long time. Uh, understanding the relationship between city governments and county governments and everything and how important it is to get along a little camaraderie along the way a disagreement occasionally right and uh, you walk through those and uh, i appreciate this man i appreciate this physical court and the good job that they've done in the past and i appreciate you very much we'll be around thank you all very much thank you. We've got one more here, and, and I'm not trying to surprise you, but after this, I need about a five minute recess to gather my thoughts for the rest of the meeting. But if Larry Hatfield, if you come up here, Larry, please, sir. And uh, I see you have most of your, uh, what I want to say, fan club here and, and all the fun stuff. But you can't say enough about this guy who split our community to probably one of the worst disasters we ever had at train wreck when he was mayor. He's been in, he, he's been a big part of our, hey, don't you do that to me. I'm <laughs> starting to say for me. So, anyway. It's been a long time. It's been a great ride, Larry. Appreciate you. And I know we've had our disagreements, but we've always agreed to, to disagree with you. So, you're, you're a gentleman and a scholar, and we appreciate you. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> 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 Thank you all very much. Yeah, it's been us. Uh, and I started politics in 86. Yep. Like the mayor when I was 33. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but like all of you, 
Thursday. Congratulations to all of you new ones. Uh, it's a rough road, but you'll make it. And God bless all of you. And, and at this time, before we before we do look forward with the rest of the meeting, because it's going to be a long meeting today, I'd, I'd like to have a five-minute recess for Larry and his family. Uh, they have a special gift for him. But, uh, anyway, we, we'd like to chat with you for just a few minutes. Uh, I did my course in this meeting. Okay? Fair enough, guys. Fair Thank enough you. to the audience. <laughs>
Okay. Um, we're just waiting on. There you go. Are you ready, Magistrate? Okay. I appreciate the consideration of all here to take a five-minute recess. For, so at this time, uh, we'll move forward with the uh, uh, presentation about this is a project that we've been working on literally for over nine months, and we're here to end all speculation about. Uh, to dispel rumors about the opportunities that we have as a court and as a community to move forward. Uh, it's the Grand Reserve Project at Highway 245. Uh, it includes over 60 acres. And at this time, I would like them to come up and uh, present. Mr. Shiller. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day in central Kentucky. A little bit chilly, but at least the sun shines out, and I got some long johns on, so that's a good thing. Uh, I got to get all my cheating material out of here. I got cheat sheets, cheating glasses. <laughs> I guess that's what happens to you when you get old. First of all, I would like to say that it is my pleasure to address the Bullitt County Physical Court. The reason I am here is to discuss the future of the Claremont exit. This exit is, at its present state is a very clean, green, and beautiful exit. And I have fell in love with Central Kentucky. Judge Summers and I would like to keep it clean and green for the next 200 years. And with proper planning and development, we think we can make this exit even more beautiful. Like I said before, my name is David Schuler, and I am a lifelong resident, resident of rural southern Indiana. So uh, I know all about the knobs and the hollers. <laughs> I grew up in an area similar to Claremont. I am before this council because I have purchased 20 acres at the Claremont exit. And it is adjacent to 40 acres the county owns. It is my proposal to lease the adjacent property from the county, the 40 acres, for a combined total area of 60 acres. I have uh, proposed building a pre-planned, architecturally designed green development with a very small building and parking lot footprint. I would estimate the development would have a 15-acre footprint for around only 25% of the total property. The, 60 acres would also be enhanced by professional southern landscaping. Uh, native plants such as magnolias, azaleas, rhododendrons, camellias, dogwoods, etc., etc. I have been lucky enough to be involved in four hotel projects over the last eight years. <coughs> two hotels in Indiana and two hotels in Florida. The last hotel I did was in Miramar Lakes in Florida, an upscale part of Florida, and it's a $35 million Hyatt house. While I was uh, involved in developing this property, uh, I met some very influential, what you would call national master developers. And they are very interested in uh, participating in the development at the Claremont exit. 
At this time, I will turn you over to Maria Wayne Scott of Taylor Seathger Williams Design Group to let you know what we have in mind for that area. One more uh, thing before I to turn you over to Maria. Uh, Judge Summers has worked tirelessly the last 35 years, I think since he worked at Beam, to keep this exit uh, very clean and nice and green and respectable. Uh, there's no firecracker stores, no, mo no, no Motel 6s, Motel 8s, Motel 10s, Motel 12s, uh, no car lots, no high-rise signs, and uh, we want to keep that Claremont exit like that for the next 200 years. Uh, thanks for your time, and if you have any questions, you can direct them to me or Maria at the end of our presentation. Once again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Judge. Thank you. Good morning. I'm not Maria. Um, <laughs> my name is Amin Omidi and Maria Wayne Scott over here. We're with Taylor Seifer Williams Design Group and we've had the distinct pleasure of working with Mr. Schuler over uh, the last several months to really start to uh, paint a picture of his vision. And so that's been our primary uh, purpose so far. So what you see on the screens uh, kind of right there and on the sides is is that first articulation of um, his kind of overall vision, as he stated, would be sort of a, a green destination that really exemplifies the local landscape, creates a destination for visitors, but also uh, a wonderful anchor and amenity uh, for the local community. And the kind of uh, cream at the top is the Grand Reserve Hotel that would sit on top of the hill there. Uh, you would enter through and I'm sorry, I don't have a, this is my only pointer. <laughs> so, um, you would enter through kind of that, that entrance to the south, up the driveway, um, approach what we'd see as being kind of a, a roundabout that collects you and invites you with uh, some public art that would kind of anchor. And you would have some developments there that could include restaurants and retails, maybe a visitor center. Uh, but some different things that would really be um, welcoming to people kind of first coming in, but also be something that, you know, folks living here might go to just on a Tuesday or Wednesday evening. And, and then as you move kind of north along the road, we kind of start climbing that hill. If anybody's familiar with that property, it, it kind of rises pretty quickly and it falls pretty quickly. So we're trying to work with the natural grays to minimize the impact to that landscape. And as you move up, um, we show just a small series of townhomes there that would be nestled into the hill, uh, some green space out front, um, and then just kind of parking that wraps the rear and then some visitor parking along the roadway. Con continuing up the road, you'll have a, a parking lot which will furnish the hotel that um, I think people really want to stay at not only as they're visiting kind of the county and the larger region, uh, with bourbon tourism and everything else that's kind of going on here, uh, but I think a lot of events will also be held there. Uh, we'll get into some slides that show what it looks like uh, later on in the presentation, but really looking at giving it an active life. Um, on the east and southeast part of the property, looking at having a, a gas station that's much more than a gas station. So we all need to go and fill up our cars. Thankfully, that's coming down a little bit. Um, but also a place that you can go and kind of have a strong retail component. Um, and then up the way is kind of more, a little bit more speculative, but uh, showing a little bit more uh, like low density, multi-family housing that could occur there. It might also remain kind of green space. Um, so that's kind of the programmatic outline of the development. I think one thing that stitches it all together is having a high uh, design approach. So looking at the architecture and the landscape and all of these things to really be something that's beautiful and tightly tied together. It all looks like one cohesive piece. We'll go to the next slide. We'll go back to kind of the gas station area. You see kind of some parking, minimizing the impact. You know, there'll be some walls to kind of hold back the slopes, but tucking it into the landscape and really having it address the street and having a, uh, you know, a, a very nice sort of front face in the next slide. And it's kind of a vision looking from above, looking down. You can kind of see the architecture in the background inspired by the local landscape and the local architecture. 
place where uh, visitors might come in buses, but they, you know, the daily traffic might come in cars. All of it would kind of be greeted with just this abundance of greenery kind of wrapping the whole uh, thing. Next slide, please. And this would be facing the street. So this would be looking south. The building looks south um, with a, uh, a face that really presents and welcomes folks in. Next slide, please. And this is kind of that next area that we spoke about first. This is your main gateway into the development. It's your entry. It'll be uh, something that really, as you come off the exit, pulls you into the site and welcomes you. And you kind of see a uh, almost like a campus style layout. Next. And so um, you can kind of see the architecture here. We're playing on the local regional uh, vernacular of the architecture, but also giving it a, a modern flavor so it feels fresh and new. And creating spaces out front. All of these are like balancing the indoor and the outdoor with patios and large windows. And then if you look at the, so there's a circle, I don't know if you can see it with an A. This is gonna be our next view, and then the C and the B, so that kind of relates to everything. Next. And so here's that first view, looking at that corner, uh, showing you, you know, lush landscape as you walk in. And that exterior space is really trying to make that vibrant and give a lot of life with little details like ambient lighting and landscaping and use some, you know, big stone boulders, really give it a lot of richness uh, on its exterior spaces. We see uh, a scene here, which is kind of our fictionalized view of how this space might be used, which is to welcome, you know, festivals and small gatherings. It could be a family event, a birthday, what have you. These, these spaces between the buildings could really give a lot of in-between life that doesn't need to be the large event. It, it can be much more practical than for everybody, for families. And we move up the hill and we look at the townhome layout. So that's gonna be our next series of views, uh, starting with A, kind of looking down the, the row of the main stretch, which is right here. Uh, so this is just one take on what the architecture might look like, a very sort of classic American view of um, townhomes the way you know cities used to be built with uh, communities living kind of closely together. And then uh, tucking in some play areas because um, sometimes these more dense developments are just you know geared at younger folks, but we want families to also enjoy this, so making sure that it accommodates uh, people throughout their life. And then, you know, out front there's a green space, but it could also be a winter scene where you bring in kind of ice skating and things like that. So providing a space for a lot of life to occur and a lot of uh, celebration to occur. So now we move up to the hotel, which is kind of the, the granddaddy of the development. It's, uh, it's got kind of the, the most polished. So we're gonna look at the parking lot. You can see that it can accommodate um, you know, plenty of spaces for folks to come and, and visit. And this is just conceptual, so we're just kind of mapping it out right now. Um, we'll get into the details uh, later on in the project. And then making a very striking entry. So as you come up the hill, you're, you're nestled into the woods, you're driving up the hill and what feels like a rural road. And then as you approach the top, we want it to be an aha, a wow moment um, that really is striking, unexpected, and memorable. And so we drew kind of our um, architectural inspiration from a lot of the sort of distur distillery architectural language and taking that and you know really dressing it up and giving it um, a classy experience that also relates back to the local landscape and that you won't see anywhere else. And so you can't have a hotel without a great pool and a great deck where people can kind of have an uh, a nice time. So we've taken a first pass at showing um, what a pool area and deck. This would all look um, eastward across the landscape um, and over the interstate. So you're kind of looking in that direction uh, towards Bernheim. And this would be a rooftop kind of um, outdoor bar deck area. Uh, in the mornings you might sit out there and have a cup of coffee. In the evenings maybe something stronger. And uh, you know, creating little pockets and nooks where people can kind of gather, uh, rather they're there with a couple of friends or maybe a lot more friends. Okay. 
that was it. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if we're, um, Judge, I'll turn it over to you if there's any questions. Um, sure. Okay. We, we appreciate your time and your energy and, and Dave and, and um, moving forward. Um, there will be some contract negotiations that will have to be discussed with the next court, and that's why they're here to, to view this. Uh, it's a green space and an opportunity to be able to give something back to our community that we don't have. I mean, this is not your typical exit. It's, it's an opportunity. Our community, our county, owns three corners of that exit. And why can't we have a great exit into not only our community, but into central Kentucky, or as a gateway to the south, to where folks can really see what we are here in this community. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to preserve uh, what I'm going to say green space. We've worked hard on the zoning overlay. And uh, it, it's, it's a, the first step into uh, taking our tourism to the next level where it should be. We have created so many high-paying jobs in the last three months with UPS, McKesson, the hospital, and, and those coming in the future that we're recruiting as well. It gives those folks an opportunity to stay and live in our community with something to do uh, that we don't have right now. And it's an opportunity for them to have places for their, their family gatherings, their weddings, their conventions. Uh, the townhomes brings an opportunity to Fortune 500 companies that wants to settle here to bring their uh, leadership teams here for extended periods of time, of which we don't have. Most all of them here that you see in our developments on the business side in our community, they send them all out on Hurstburn Lane. Why can't they stay here? Why can't they spend their dollars here? But this will, this will provide an opportunity to get us to the next level of retail and commercial. This, this will move us beyond the, what I'm going to say, the fast food and uh, quick hotels that we do have. Uh, it'll be something between Louisville and Nashville that's nowhere else. It'll become a true destination. Uh, if, you would, if you would back up to the slide with the restaurant, part of the component here there is a, literally a uh, what we know will probably be a literally a four or five star restaurant for the community too as well, uh, along with enhancing our tourism. Uh, what, a, what a great opportunity for a visitor's experience of what we will have there to bring into our community. A gas station that doesn't look like a gas station. Townhomes and uh, a grand hotel. Something that we can be proud of as a community. And uh, we've worked on this for literally over nine months of hit and tat. And uh, we will be in, uh, if, the, if the new court agrees to this, we'll be in contract negotiations uh, to make sure that all aspects of this is met. And this is something that's going to happen in six months. This is literally a three to four year project because developments like this doesn't happen overnight. But, uh, I guess that's the best way I can summarize it. Um, members, y'all have seen it, and it's, uh, uh, I can appreciate the opportunities that Mr. Shore and his team has provided to our community. And, uh, I don't have a whole lot else to say about it, but I am passionate about keeping the 245 area as a green space, something as a tourism corridor, something that we can preserve as a community. So, yes sir, go ahead. There's yeah, just a, I mean you come down 65 and this is what we have. We, we own 65, I mean that is our gold pot. So how do we do it? City of Shepherdsville has got what it got. We, they need warehouses, they got warehouses. They're making money, they're doing stuff. County, we need this exit to be Right. I mean, everybody, if you tell them you're from Bullock County, they say, well, I ain't never seen so many warehouses in my life. I want them to say, man, do y'all see that exit? Beginning of the Bourbon Trail. You imagine getting with the state, putting a 
big thing. I don't know if you went up to, to Indiana and they, a couple of them towns has got big metal rod on, you know, with them sitting right there on 245 saying the beginning of the Bourbon Trail. And putting back into the, our county what it started out started out being a rural county, started out being family, started out being just helpful to everybody. Warehouses have their place, don't get me wrong, and good and all that, that's what their place is, that's where they're at. But the beginning of our county, that should be the place where everybody designed to go. Everybody being proud of something, seeing a nice, nice restaurant, a nice, nice hotel, something that, that brings all our community in. You know, something that we've got 65, we've got Bourbon, we've got Boyd County, we've got Bernheim Forest, everything right there on that exit. Why can't we, and that's what we've been working on for four years, is trying to make that exit a tourism exit, keeping the warehouses off of it, and just making it a very great thing to crowd. And I, and I pour to our new court coming in. I hope you see our vision too. I hope that you see it and you keep working towards that. Uh, but it, I think this is going to be a, a great, great thing for our county, for sure. But I just also want to say, and I think we've looked at this and we've had a vision for this for months and months and months. And this is an opportunity for us to move forward on it. I have to echo what Jerry said and Jerry said also. Something we have worked and talked about and everything. Months and months and months, and I'd like to see it move forward. You're welcome, but um, any comments, Joe? No, I'd just like to <clears throat> echo what you and Dennis and Joe said. We've been working on this a long time. It's going to be a great project. Yeah. Well, dang, we're proud of it. Thank you. And we, we appreciate you being here today. Um, and it'll be it'll hang in the balance with three of the members here sitting in the front row and the new county attorney for negotiations with the contract. So I'm pleased that you all are here today. Uh, this isn't something that uh, we wanted to make sure that transparency has always been what we've been here, and this is where we're at. So this is us. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you all. Yes, Appreciate sir. the opportunity. Absolutely. Mr. Shirley, thank you, and have a safe ride flight back. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dave. Okay, at, at this time, we're going to go into the new business. Uh, first reading public hearing is only known as 22 21. Uh, Life Lawn Care LLC. Charlie? Planning Docket 2022 Z76, Rice Lawn Care LLC, seeking to rezone from agriculture to B1. Located at 826 Bethel Church Road, parcel 070-000-00-005, in the unincorporated area of the county, 17 acres more or less. The purpose is to expand existing residential commercial lawn care business with additional storage and office space. Future land use map calls for low density residential. The Bullitt County Planning Commission, pursuant to provisions of KRS 100.211, held a public hearing concerning the application on November 30th, 2022. Based upon the testimony of the applicants and or proponents, the Bullitt County Planning Commission finds the requested zoning change is not in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. There is concern over allowable future business uses on the property. Opponents objected to the proposed zoning change due to potential drainage issues due to land disturbance. They are concerned with crime and safety issues as well as increased traffic due to proposed uses. Because of the testimony received at the hearing, the Bullock County Planning Commission recommends this requested zoning change be denied and sends an unfavorable recommendation to the Bullock County Fiscal Court. The requested zoning change is not in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Thank you, Charlie. Rob? The first reading call of Kentucky County of Bullets, zoning warrants number 22-31. An ordinance relates to changing the zoning of certain property from agricultural to B1 highway business. The property in question is 17 acres more or less, located at 826 Bethel Church Road, in an unincorporated area of the county. 
Whereas the Fiscal Court of Bullock County has presented the evidence of public hearing for the Joint Planning Commission, the recommendation of the Commission, the information provided to the staff for the Office of Bullock County Planning and Zoning, and the testimony and evidence presented at the public hearing of the Fiscal Court. And whereas the Fiscal Court concurs in, it also reads the Joint Planning Commission for said zoning change, and approves and accepts the recommendations. And this matter of sentence in terms of the proposed zoning change acceptable should be approved. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Fiscal Court of County Bullock County, Kentucky. The above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County, more particularly described in the Minister of Records and Planning Commission, in Doctrine 2022-Z-76, we serve a change from agricultural to V1 highway business. Section 2, this order shall take effect upon passage of publications required by law. Section 3, she is section provision of process ordinance be declared unconstitutional or invalid for any reason by a court of competent jurisdiction. Then the remainder of this ordinance shall be effective and shall remain in full force and effect. Section 4, ordinances and resolutions, to the extent they are consistent herewith, hereby are killed. Give first reading and public hearing at a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of December 2022. Be given a second reading and vote upon at a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the third day of January 2023. Thank you, Rob. Anyone here to speak for zoning ordinance 22 31, the Rice Lawn Care LLC? Yes, sir. Good morning, uh, Good morning, gentlemen of the Fiscal Court and ladies and gentlemen of the Fiscal Court. Uh, coming up, uh, as you know, I'm Eric Ferris, uh, currently with the firm of Dinsmore & Scholl. This is my colleague in the practice of law, Emily Vessels. Uh, Emily is going to take the lead on this presentation, uh, but uh, we will uh, be presenting to you the information which will show that the Planning Commission got this one wrong and that we wreck we will present to you the evidence which will sustain a, a reversal of the recommendation and a finding that the requested zoning uh, of a B1 is appropriate and is indeed in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, with us today is Mr. Mike Rice, uh, the owner of the property and the applicant. Uh, also Steve Scott of Mendel Scott, who's uh, been um, a part of um, working with landowners and developers in this county for many years and uh, knows, knows this county as, as well as uh, many of us who are natives here from his work. And Steve has um, worked on this site and has developed uh, the plan that uh, Emily has laid in front of you. Uh, and in, we're all prepared to uh, answer questions after Emily's presentation. and I'm here again on behalf of the applicant Mike Rice and we are requesting the 17 acres shown here to be zoned from agricultural to B1 um, in order to allow the applicant to continue and expand the use of his landscaping business and then the applicant intends to apply for a conditional use permit to allow mini storage on the property. Um, next slide please. The current zoning 
map shows that there is light industrial nearby along with um, some commercially zoned property to the north of the site. Next slide. And then again, nearby properties, um, the left picture, bottom left picture is Buki Construction, which is the industrial property near the site. The top um, left picture is an adjacent property owner who has some trailer parking and a cell tower on the property. And um, this property owner also came and spoke in favor of the zoning change at the Planning Commission meeting. And then down the road, you have um, Jerry's Auto Repair and Towing and Farrell's Drywall Company. Um, next slide, please. This is the current landscape buffers on the property. It's been prepared for the continued operation and expansion of the landscaping business. And this portion of the property backs up to um, some resi residential sites and has been leveled for Mr. Rice's business. Um, he plans on planting additional buffers and he has planted some green giants on 12 foot centers um, and has planted around 150 trees so far on the property and plans on planting more. Uh, next slide please. Again, some more landscaping that Mr. Rice has done on the property. Next slide. And then this just shows some of the dense veg vegetation located in between this property and the residential property. As you can see, it's still fairly dense um, even in the winter months. And next slide, please. This is where his mulch bins are currently located on the back portion of the property and where Mr. Rice plans on um, placing his landscaping business. And this is the proposed site plan um, showing where in the back portion where the proposed warehouse for his landscaping business would be and then kind of towards the front middle portion of the property is where the proposed mini storage would be laid out. Um, at the Planning Commission meeting, Mr. Rice agreed to several restrictions on the property um, in addition to the required setbacks and buffers. He agreed to an additional 50 foot setback um, at the beginning of the property adjacent to some residential property owners and then also agreed within that 50 foot setback to add some vegetation to allow for more of a buffer. And then again on the <coughs> southern part border of the property an additional 50 foot setback and then a 75 foot setback where the proposed warehouse would be for his landscaping business on the back portion of the property. Um, so one of the concerns at the Planning Commission was just visualizing and understanding where the mini storage would be located. So Steve Scott has prepared this site plan to kind of show you that there would only be about four proposed buildings for the mini storage and then again the drainage issue that would all be addressed with this site plan in Mendel Scott. Um, all the storage buildings would be developed with in, inward facing and all the drives would also be inward facing along with downward facing lighting so that it would not disturb um, adjacent property owners and um, along with the additional setbacks that Mr. Rice agreed to that would also ensure minimal disturbance to those property owners. Next slide. Um, so this proposed zoning is in compliance with the comprehensive plan with commercial strategy five. Um, it, commercial uses currently surround the other nearby residential properties and the operation of a landscaping business would not um, adversely impact the surrounding neighborhoods and as you can see the natural layout and current vegetation <coughs> along with the vegetation that Mr. Rice plans on um, implementing and along with the additional setbacks he agreed to. The property would allow for the proposed use and would not adversely impact adjacent property owners. Next slide. And additionally, um, sorry that one, yeah. The zoning is compatible with the current conditions of the site. There's an existing building um, located on the property that would remain in use and um, Mr. Rice would be able to add new improvements and operate his business with the ample separation from any near or adjacent residential tracks. Next slide. And then lastly, um, the proposed use of 
mini storage and the operation of his lawn care business is less intrusive than the existing industrial and commercial zoning in the vicinity. Yeah. Could, um, could you back up to the plant for us? <laughs> yes, thank you. So I, I just want to emphasize, as uh, Emily pointed out, um, at the Planning Commission, uh, one, we did not have this design uh, to present to the Planning Commission at that point. Um, we presented this for your benefit, for the court's benefit, and um, the, the question, the, the point that was read, I think, by Charlie, one of the comments about drainage, um, that had always been addressed, but it's visualized here uh, within the um, southern east there, the dotted rectangular section, you can see the lower section is where all of the properties would uh, decide would drain to related to those storage facilities. The additional boundary area was an agreed to um, condition that we proffered as well as on this um, western side, that little L shape. Um, you see the additional landscaping there to separate those residential tracks uh, from the proposed storage. Um, that would be some substantial landscaping. Uh, Steve can address what, what's, uh, what he's designed there. So um, landscaping, additional setbacks, uh, the retention to prevent any uh, runoff, and um, there was some comment to it hearing about gun fire um, presumed to have occurred on this site. Um, that that would not be with permission of <laughs> of our client. Uh, we we believe uh, that's from coming from adjacent property, um, but we we understood the concern of the neighbors uh, about that. Um, so. That's, I wanted to assure you that is not anything that is allowed on this site. So, happy to answer questions, Mike. Here, Steve. Yeah, I'm just going to We about grew that location, and it's this property is within a quarter of a mile of where we're at now. So we're planning to move all operations over there. Um, you know, we'll have privacy fences, everything else. Uh, like I said, you know, our normal business hours are eight to uh, five thirty or so. And like in the front, you'll be having all your storage areas, and in the back, you'll have your landscaping. Yes, sir. I was trying to get the my business on the back part not to be disturbing the neighbors with mowers starting up or you know me messing with my personal stuff. So I was trying to limit it. And Tommy Stillwell and Troy Hampton, which is the neighbors, I guess if you're looking to the right. I've been in talks with them, and they're that's what they're wanting. Actually, they had to work the other night. The reason they didn't come to the meeting, but they're wanting that instead of houses or anything else back there. So can you explain how you would. Uh, market your, your trees and so forth in that southeast point yeah how that's set up yeah so along the edge approximately 10 foot or actually five and a half foot from the property line i've got green giants which will grow 25 to 30 feet i've got them on 12 13 foot centers and then steve has another row of some plants it was a japanese So it goes planting through there some trees and then we'll plant some red maples and different things on site. Right in here. What you said you were going to put Yeah, that. and then on this this here, this will have green giants all the way around. We've already got it planted here. I just trying to budget wise and stuff. You know, we ran into wintertime, so in springtime I'll finish planting the rest of them out all the way around the property. Is it be fenced all the way around too? Yes, it'll be fenced. We're gonna do a six foot chain link fence, privacy with the slats, uh, black 
and so it just kind of blends in because I don't want anything to be really sticking out there. So the, the, the pointed area to, to the southeast is for display of, of uh, trees that you'll have to be replanted. Yes. That, that whole yeah. area. And that open area, we're eventually talking about bringing some trees maybe in from the south and then, you know, resell them as wholesale or whatever on this L shape. <coughs> you know how far the, the their storage area is from this site? The estimation. <sighs> the only one I can think of is up in, up there by Pearl's Food Mart. Yeah. And kind of some of the other site. Where's the other one at up there? On Highway 44. Oh, just yeah. up a little way. Where they had the big gorilla place. Yes. And our site, I'm not, I'm wanting to blend in. I don't want this concrete buildings. I want it not to just be sticking out there. And the thing is, it's going to be a buffer for everything else on the property. And it should be, you know, it's not going to be a 24 hour site. And it's going to be better than another 200 homes going in. Right. And my, what I'm really wanting to draw off of is the Fisher Homes and some of the local houses that's right in that area. So as far as knowing who's coming in, my whole game plan is just the local people right there. I'm not wanting to, 30 miles out, I don't want them in our area. I'm just hoping just a local local group. And anyway, we already know who's in our community there. So How many houses across the street do you think there is? 600 houses? Oh, if not more. Not more. And then I know Fisher, I think they're getting ready to, it kind of butts up to the property where the cell phone tire is. I think there's another two, three hundred houses going in. So um, I know they're getting ready to start phase two on it right now. They probably be people across the street to be closer that, to us. That's that's what I plan. I mean, and like I said, I don't want to. I don't want the crime coming in. I got several million dollars worth of equipment and stuff, and I live there, so I'm not wanting to bring that in. And you know, so like I said, it's it definitely we want to hire in facility. We don't want your $19.99 special moving in. You know, we want more of a, a higher end, better looking, because I don't want to deal with headaches. I don't have enough time. Okay. Thank you. Well, no problem, sir. Okay. One of the things I want to say and everything, a couple of things I want to talk about and everything. Several months ago and everything, when uh, we was having all these different developments and everything coming in, and we passed an order in court that they would be on these site plans or whatever and everything, had to be a certified drainage plan. They also had to be a certified traffic study. That was all done by engineers. Now, we're not going to be the ones that's going to be making the decision on this. Three of us is going to be gone. These court members here be the ones to make the decision on me. But the Planning Commission has made a recommendation to deny this, but it's up to them to make a decision on the, if the comprehensive plan was made an error or if they got to have findings of facts or whatever. They've got to do that and everything if they overturn it. This one really addressed this to the new court members that's coming in. So always check these things out. But uh, we did make a decision here several months ago and everything. Any development that came in this county, we had to have a certified drainage plan by engineer and we had to have a certified traffic study. And that tells the people out there what you've got and what you're going to have and what you're going to do. So I really wanted the new court members and everything to be aware of that. It's going to be on your shoulders and everything next week, which is the 3rd of January. So we won't be here. The jury will be here. Your son lost will be here. But uh, we will not be the ones here that will be making the decision. But I did want to emphasize that and bring it out there for the public and for the new court members. And one thing I can say, with my family and with Steve Scott, we have some of the best engineers and the best land developers from the county. My family has developed millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of projects and so this is there's gonna be a lot of experts dealing with this and it's just kind of a this deal here with my uncle it's kind of something we've done together as a family so it's a it's a local it's a it's just something local trying to do uh, and this is not a fly by night operation i think i've been in business for 15 16 years and i know uh, i was brought up about my shop overall paris passway there was a big uproar when we moved in. All the neighbors over there, we're all great friends. I paved the road, I take care of all the maintenance. Uh, there's very limited traffic. Even the neighbor that threw the biggest complaint, he called and wished me Merry Christmas. So, you know, we've all made amends and a lot of people don't see the greater vision of things. You know, they see land being moved, but you got to move the dirt. 
to start the operation. So this is this in its infancy stage, and there is a. It's gonna be nice. My name's on it. Oh. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, anyone here to speak against uh, zoning ordinance? 2231 West Lawn Care LLC. Uh, I need for Jess Hurley, please. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Jesse Hurley. I live at 473 Burrowwood Circle. So my my house backs up. Do you mind going? Oh yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. Do you mind going back just a little? You can go. No, two, yep, one more. There you go. So, is it okay if I... Sure. Okay. So my house is here. So this, this backs up to my house. Um, and that, those trees are approximately 16 feet from my property line. I went and stepped it off the other day. Um, my concern with this, I mean, there's several concerns. You know, Mr. Rice says he doesn't want to be a nuisance to the community, yet he did all of this work in the middle of the night, all night long. Neighbors in our entire neighborhood who don't even live on our street, who do not back up to this, came to us and talked to us about, like, did this keep you up all night? Because this is what he was, I mean, it was so loud. My sister, who lives a mile from us, could hear it at her house. Um, so he, he has become a nuisance. Um, when, when all of this started, we, my husband spoke with Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice assured us we had nothing to, to worry about. He was making a beautiful green space, planting grass, planting more trees. It was going to be a beautiful green space. We questioned about, you know, can we buy some of the property as a buffer? His land, he doesn't have to sell it to us. He assured us it was useless, it was worthless, it wasn't worth our money, we had nothing to worry about. And then he comes in in the middle of the night and lays a parking lot in our backyard. A parking lot that he can't say what he's using for. Um, he says the storage units are gonna be at the top of the property. I don't know this, he has told others that he will be um, using this back here for trailers and boats to store um, like campers, RVs, those sorts of things. Um, it, it's loud all the time. He says they work eight to four or five, whatever. Um, they are usually out there before it's light out and after it's dark. Um, I took a picture the other morning. It was 7.30 in the morning and they were back there working already on a Saturday. Um, I have small children. I have a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. They sleep. This has all been, it, if you have small children, you, you know, like, sleep is important. You don't want them woken up. And, and this hinders everyone's sleep. Um, you know, we, I spend all of our time outside, and now we, we barely spend time in our backyard because of all of the noise, all of the equipment, um, the shootings, the, I mean, the guns are, my, my two-year-old found bullets in their playground um, a few weeks ago. So it, it's scary, it's concerning that these are the things happening on this property and we don't feel safe. When we moved there um, four and a half years ago, I thought we would be there for a really, really, really long time. And now, I, I don't really want to be there, but my property value is gonna drop so much because he's putting storage units in my backyard that it, it's not worth to sell right now. And so, um, you know, I, I, I just beg of, of all of you all to make a good ethical decision and to deny this because it, it's not what he says. There's no buffer. I look out my window and this is all I see. The trees are about this tall. Um, the berm that he says is six feet is not. In some places, it's completely flat. Um, I would say three to four feet at most. It, my concern is Mr. Rice has not been truthful with things up to this point, and if this is zone B1, he can put anything he wants back here. He can put a gas station in my backyard right here, and, and we can't say anything about it. 
if he wants to keep his landscaping business up there I honestly I don't I don't want it there but it's better than storage units and store you know storage just in my backyard I'm, I'm worried about the crime that that's going to bring in as well so that's it all right Th thank, thank you miss thank you miss Hurley uh, we'll start at the top of the list and Amy T-A-U-L-B-E-E -E. yes your honor thank you it's a hard name I thought I would spell it that way I wouldn't that's, that's perfect. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, yes, my name is Amy Talby, and I live at 451 Burlwood Circle. Um, I, uh, just for reference, my property, excuse me, is most of this back section right here, my home, is in the back. And you're correct, there are some hardwood trees that you see in the photo. Those tree, the hardwood trees are on my property, and several of those are ash, and we've been removing them period by period. So I don't know what that's going to look like over the next few years as the, as the trees fall down. I did present in front of you before the meeting a, a statement that I laid on each one of these desks. It's very long for the sake of time. I won't read everything to you, but please uh, take your time to, uh, to read that as you can. Um, the potential decision to rezone the property owned by Mr. Rice of Lawn Care LLC, which would allow for storage units under a B1 rezone, is a concern to my family. We're full-time residents in a quiet subdivision <laughs> concerned about living with storage units along our backyard. We are not part-time residents, property owners, landowners who might see this rezoning as a way to improve our financial decision should this decision set a precedence for increasing those such property values in the future. You know, my family, we chose a single residential family neighborhood where, you know, I've grown uh, ki uh, kids uh, here in, in Bullock County, and we would like our future to represent a similar residential lifestyle as well. I do understand that change is imminent. Um, it's my hope that we can have some collaborative efforts between Mr. Rice and the adjacent landowners to include myself to uh, lead to a solution where everyone benefits. Um, I perceive the current question to be how to maintain a positive residential environment while allowing a B1 acceptable business to exist. And uh, my family's health, safety, and financial stability are values that are most important to me. So concerns over things of increased light and noise pollution negative environmental impact, decreased property valuation, you know, our emotional, you know, well-being uh, would conflict with those values. Um, I have spoken with Mr. Rice once um, while I was at my residence. Uh, it had been deforested and graded on his property after that had taken place. He did state to me that his intent was to expand his landscaping business, uh, store mulch, landscaping supplies, and his social media posts appear to represent the same. Thus, I had no reason to believe that storage units were being considered. Uh, I further assume that as Mr. Rice is a very experienced business owner that he had already applied for and been granted proper permits. I mean, I certainly hope that he did not proceed with the intent to simply pay minor fines that could arise. Um, since I originally had no layout at the planning and zoning meeting, I truly did not know what Mr. Rice's plans you know, are or were um, for that gray rock shield rectangle directly behind my residence. Regardless, I am concerned about rezoning to B1 overall as it may allow for even more undesirable B1 approved businesses to occupy that site should Mr. Rice be forced to sell all or a portion of that property in the future. Um, I'm primarily concerned about light and noise pollution above that of a normal residential neighborhood that could affect our family's you know, physical, emotional uh, well-being. The family bedrooms that we have are on the second story of our home that look out over this property. Um, uh, you know, restful sleep, I, I think, as uh, Ms. Jesse referred to, uh, you know, normal outside enjoyment of our home may be disrupted by security lighting, commercial business traffic, etc. Um, so, and while Mr. Rice may have already invested millions of dollars in this property and uh, renovations before the rezoning approval took place, I trust that my family does not not have millions of dollars to relocate
state should our wellness be affected and resale uh, potential uh, values drop. Um, I want to restate that I am not opposed to progress. A reasonable solution for my family and future families who may live there would be to allow for that gray shale acreage uh, along my property border uh, up to towards the uh, road that they use to be rezoned as B1 for agriculture and forestry only. Uh, in addition, you know, any such businesses uh, should not increase the light noise, environmental and other concerns over that of a single family neighborhood. In this way, Mr. Rice would be uh, allowed to use the property as he originally intended and it would protect the property for this use should Mr. Rice need to sell it or a portion of it in the future. Uh, I hope that you take the time to read my full statement that I provided to you, that you think of my family, the families in the community, um, and your decision, please promote the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the residents of Bullock County, which are in our best interest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Um, Michael Allen. I want to thank you all for your time today. Okay. My name is Michael Allen. I live at 1161 Bethel Church Road. Uh, I'm not opposed to a man trying to make a living for his family and everything like that. Uh, we live directly across Bethel Springs, which is the new subdivision going in there. And we've tolerated and put up with uh, for two years all the dirt and trash blown by wind or whatever on our property and have spent many hours out there cleaning up from that development. But the, the problem I have with the whole deal is if we have zoning uh, classifications, and if, if B1 is highway, Bethel Church Road is not highway Bethel Church. Although, you may not know your drivers drive like they do, but many, many times I see trucks and trailers come flying by, past my house doing 40, 45, 50, and it should be 35 through there. Uh, I can hear them coming usually, and I look up and it's one of their. But my whole problem is, is that if it's B1 highway, it should be B1 highway. Uh, you know, put your business out on Highway 44, and you'll do a killer business out there, I'm sure. But that's my whole uh, point is, is that you have zoning ordinances for a reason, and if it's zone B1 that's highway use, it's not a highway. Period. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, Chris, P-A-U-L-L-E-Y? Pauly. Pauly. There you go. Thank you, sir. I was just hard, having a hard time reading that. Thank you. Yes, sir. John. Uh, the other ladies are talking about their homes there. Are there lots of fall away? There's no buffer going to be high enough. <laughs> okay. Can you go back to uh, the aerial view, please? Uh, no. Let's go to the other. <laughs> um, the one that shows property lines. No, no, no. There's another one, the another aerial side. view. There. Can you make it larger, please? You cannot? Okay. Watch the Okay. This is all right. Can you see? This line is not part of the buffer. Uh, I stated at the other meeting that the fence, his fence, was 24 inches from my driveway. I measured it. It is not a lag. It's 30. Now, uh, he has set his fence about 6 inches past my line. Now, wants to put storage units here and here. Now, I used to sit right here in our kitchen eat breakfast and I can see wood. I look out now, I see Death Valley. All of this is gone. All of it is gone. There used to be a gully here. It's full of our getting filled. I believe man wants a straight chunk of land here. These people have already put up a privacy fence, my neighbor. They've already done that. But storage units and right here that's 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 not acceptable now i will say that mr rice has he planted trees here 
or small, the overall. Back here, all of this is clear. None of this is here anymore. He had put up a wood fence back there. He put up a wood fence here. He's got trees back here. It looks quite nice. It really does. But to put storage units right behind our house, that's, uh, that's not acceptable for heaven's sakes. Uh, there's no other businesses around there that creates the noise, as they had said. There is a construction company up here. He parks his equipment elsewhere. Every now and then, some of us come in. But it's nothing even half this big. Nothing at all. Uh, the other place that a business would be on 44. And uh, that's where that's way up, way down. This was agriculture. I think it needs to stay agri. Uh, you don't need to put storage units right here. Uh, there's other places. Uh, I want you around. I wanted to say too, the lady that said she hears gunshots. Yes, I know who it is. And I do know that they are responsible shooters and they're shooting into the dam of a pump. <laughs> okay. Um, there's, it's a, it's a real concern about our property value, what it's going to do. If, if we lose because People say, well, I, I'm not going to get this this home because of the uh, warehouse behind your uh, storage unit. Who, how am I going to recap my loss? Who am I going to go to? We moved here because it was peaceful, quiet, plenty of wildlife, and um, this is just upsetting the whole thing. I think I've said enough. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pollock. Um, Gayla Clements, Gayla. I'm Gayla Clements. I live at 433 Burlwood Circle. I live right next door to Amy. And um, so um, I've lived in Mount Washington most of my life, all of my adult life. Um, Love Mount Washington, love the community. I've been a, a great supporter of all things youth and old and everything else. So this this is the community I love. Um, I still spend a lot of time in this community uh, volunteering and, and working in, I work for the cabinet. Um, so I, I plan to stay here. Um, but do I want storage units in my backyard? No, because I'm concerned, like the rest of the neighbors, about the constant people coming and going, the, the lights from the facility, um, the dishonesty that I feel like that we've endured up to this point about what was being put there and how the, the process of getting to this point. Um, would we be opposed to trees and plants and what have you being planted in that very dreadful gray area that we look at every day? No, because that would change the outcome of what that looks like and maybe how um, the kids would feel about the safety versus having God knows what back, back there. If it is rezoned to be one, we might know what the, what we think we know today is going to be there, but we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, so I would like to see it not change to rezoning, just not because I don't want to see the community grow, because I do. I've lived here. I've seen the community grow. When I moved to Mount Washington, we had one red light. Did I run because we're a extension of Jefferson County? Absolutely not, because I do love it there. So I'm all for growth, but growth, responsible growth. And I don't think putting a B1 zoning in the middle of a residential area is the way to make that happen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clemens. Uh, Bonnie Foley? Thank 
you all. You're welcome. For hearing me today. I'm not a public speaker. Okay. So you should all have a copy of this letter that was sent to everyone. So I'm going to kind of read a few points from it. Uh, I live at 792 Bethel Church with my sister and brother-in-law, Chris Polly, that just mm -hmm. spoke. And I just feel like we're being bullied. He has the attitude, Mr. Rice has the attitude of it's easier to get forgiveness than it is to get permission. How many permits did he have before he even started all of this? I don't know, but I've heard none. What does that tell you? He would not have been stopped. Those green fields, the one right next beside our house, is half covered in that crushed asphalt. He'd already done the back field, and he was starting to do that field. And we called zoning right away. And they stopped him. They told him to cease. And it was only because of our phone calls that he stopped. He would have already had everything built had we not called. I just hope that before you all make your final decision, ride by the area, ride down that driveway, and see what he's done. Um, I'm afraid that storage units are going to increase crime in our area. Right now, he's put up a nice board fence a little close to our driveway, but, you know, it is his property. But that's, if that's going to be storage units beside us and behind us, he's going to have to put up chain link. And he said there's going to be restricted hours. I just can't believe anybody, anything he says to us anymore. I don't know what he's trying to get away with. But he's trying to get away. He wants to do it. He thinks if he throws enough money into it, he's going to get it. Because it was just like with the trees. He didn't have a permit to do that. So did zoning make him replant all the trees that he tore down? How can you do that? I'm, I'm just so frustrated with it all. I just feel like, he, and I feel like he's trying to bully you all in too, talking about all the money he's got in it. But well, we have money in our property also. We moved out to Mount Washington because we, we've been there 11 years. And we moved here for several reasons. One being Mount Washington is supposed to be a nice country town, which we have found it to be so. And because it was zoned agriculture, we didn't want commercial businesses around us. I would rather see single family homes beside us and behind us, people who have an investment in the property, who will take care of their property, not storage units with people coming in and going out hauling who knows what in and out of there. Well, anyway, I've said more than I wanted to. Okay. Please read the letters. That's yes, ma'am. Thank you. Th thank you, Ms. Foley. Okay, at, at this time, it's the second reading of Zoning Ordinance 22-27. Deborah Keith. Rob? It's set for Eight Common Kentucky County Bullet Zoning Ordinance 22-27. North relates to changing zoning certain properties from agriculture to R4 residential. The property in question is 1.01 acres more or less, located at 171 Knoxside Drive in Uncorporated Area County. Rest this portable county to the escrow location of the planning commission, the recommendation commission, the information about the staff board, the office of bullet county planning zoning, the testimony that is presented at the public hearing held in the fiscal court. Whereas the fiscal court concurs in, the office of the joint planning commission for the zoning change, Approved and accepts the recommendation of the planning commission. This matter is set in seven minutes. In terms of proposed zoning change, exceptional should be approved. Now, therefore, be ordained by the fiscal court of County of Bullock, County, Kentucky, section one, the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County. More quickly described in the minutes of records of the planning commission in document number 2022Z-67. It's about change from agricultural to R4 residential. Section two, this order to take effect upon the passage of publications required by law. Section 3, she accepts the provision of process orders to be declared unconstitutional or invalid for any reason by a court of competent jurisdiction. Then the remaining order should not be affected and shall be in full force of effect. Section 4, all orders for resolution to get their consent to our bill. In first reading of public hearing, I recommend the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 6th day of December 2022. In the second reading of vote upon, I recommend the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of December 2022. 
Thank you, Bob. Sam, call the roll, please. Oh, I need a motion. Jumping ahead. Make a motion we accept. I'll second it. Got a motion by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by 1st District Magistrate Mitchell to uh, vote in accordance with the uh, Planning and Zoning Committee on 22-27, Deborah Keith. Sam Carroll. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Mr. Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Harry? Thank you. Second reading Zoning Ordinance 22-28, Dallas and Evelyn Foster. Rob? Second reading really Copper Kentucky County Bullet Zoning Ordinance Number 22-28. The norms relate to changes zoning Sir property from agricultural R1 okay. residential to R1 single family residential. Okay. The property in question is 10.001 acres more or less, located at Cabin Lane in unincorporated area of the county. Whereas the Fiscal Court of Bullet County has to the Unsplug County Common Joint Planning Commission and the recommendation of the commission. The information about the staff report, the Office of Bullet County Planning Zoning, and the testimony of evidence presented at the public hearing of the Fiscal Court. The rest of the fiscal court concurs in and also reads the joint planning commission for said zoning change and approves and accepts the recommendation of the planning commission for the matter for seven, seven minutes. In terms of proposed zoning change, the acceptable should be approved. Now, the four be ordained by the fiscal court of County Bullock, Kentucky, section one, the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County. Number 50 described the Minister of Planning Commission in docket number 2022 ZS 68. It's about change from agricultural and R1 residential to single family residential. <coughs> section two, this order to take effect on passing publication required by law. Section 3, section provision of process orders be declared unconstitutional or invalid for any reason by the court of jurisdiction, and the remaining order shall not be effective and shall remain in full force and effect. Section 4, orders this resolution to, to the extent they are consistent herewith, hereby repealed. Give first reading of public hearing, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of December 2022. Give second reading of vote upon, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of December 2022. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I'll make a motion. So he's not here. Ordinance number 22-28. Second. We have a motion of 1st District Magistrate Mitchell, a second by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill um, to agree with the Planning and Zoning recommendation for Ordinance 22-28 for Dallas and Evelyn Foster. Sam, call roll, please. Yes. W he Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? Yes. Carrie? Thank you. Zon second reading zoning ordinance 22 29, Thomas Brooks, Jr. Rob? Second reading Thomas Brooks, County Board, zoning ordinance 22 29. In order to change the zoning of certain property from stream reserve to R1 single family residential. The property in question is 1.909 acres more or less, located at 360 Glory Road in an incorporated area of the county. Whereas the fiscal court of Bullock County has said that as a public hearing of the Joint Planning Commission and the Recommendation of the Commission, the information about the staff report of the Office of Bullock County Planning and Zoning, the testimony of evidence presented at the public hearing of the fiscal court. Whereas the fiscal court concurs in and the Office of the Joint Planning Commission for said zoning change and approves and accepts the Recommendation of the Planning Commission in this matter of South seven minutes. In terms of proposed zoning change, the exceptional should be approved. Now that will be ordained by the fiscal court of County of Bullock County, Kentucky. Section 1, the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County. More particularly described the Minutes and Records of Planning Commission, Doctrine number 2022 Z69. Is about change from stream reserve to R1 single family residential. Section 2, the source took effect on passage of public works as part of the law. Section 3, the section of the process ordinance declared unconstitutional or invalid for any reason by a court of competent jurisdiction. Then the remaining ordinance shall not be effective, which shall remain in full force and effect. Section 4, ordinance is resolution to the extent that it consists here with and hereby repealed. In first reading of public hearing, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 6th day of December 2022. In the second reading of vote upon, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of December 2022. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, I'm going to make a motion to accept this order. Second. Got a motion uh, by third district magistrate Laswell, a second by fourth district magistrate Ray Hill to concur with planning and zoning's recommendations on zoning ordinance 22-29, Thomas Brooks Jr. Sam, call the roll, please. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Sam. Second reading zoning ordinance 22-30, Rockhart Investments. 
Second reading of Kentucky County and Bullet, Zoning Ordinance Number 22-30. An ordinance relating to changing the zoning of certain property from conservation to IT heavy industrial. The property question is 11.130 acres more or less, located south of Christian Highway in unincorporated area of county. Whereas the fiscal report of Bullet County, to the Evans Public King of the Joint Planning Commission, the recommendation of the commission, the information about the staff before the Office of Bullet County Planning and Zoning, and the testimony and evidence presented at the public hearing of the fiscal court. Whereas the fiscal court concurs in, Dr. Reeves, the Joint Planning Commission, says zoning change, and approves to accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission in this matter, and set out said minutes. In terms of both zoning change successful, should be approved. And now, therefore, be ordained by the fiscal court of County Bullet County, Kentucky, section 1 to above property located in the incorporated area of Bullet County. More particularly, describe the minutes and records of the Planning Commission, Dr. Reeves, 2022 ZS 73, which are about change from conservation to IG heavy industrial. Section 2, this orange took effect upon the passage of publication required by law. Section 3, she is section provision for this order to be declared unconstitutional and invalid for any reason by a court of competent jurisdiction. Then the remainder of this order shall be effective and shall be in full force and effect. Section 4, all ordinances and resolutions to extend their existence here with hereby repealed. In first reading of public hearing, a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the sixth day of December 2022. In second reading and vote upon, a regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of December 2022. Thank you, Bob. Make a motion to accept the uh, zoning ordinance 2230. <coughs> Got a motion by Fourth District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second by First District Magistrate Mitchell to uh, concur with Planning Zoning's recommendation to approve zoning ordinance 22 30 Lockhart Investments. Sam, call roll, please. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rayhill? Yes. Mr. Carey? Thank you and, and good luck in your new business and moving forward, gentlemen. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, well, actions requested on, on the sheriff's uh, revenue bond. Yes, gentlemen, if you have any questions about the, it's, that's our revenue bond I have taken get passed every term and uh, we got lined up and, but I just need your approval on on the amount there yes sir uh, I guess I can make that recommendation yes sir I'm sort of perplexed on what I can and can't do so thank you I can today right so um, I'm gonna make the recommendation to accept your uh, um, bond uh, to protect you and all your deputies in the fiscal court in the county as well Second. We've got a second by fourth, well, both of them, third and fourth district magistrates, Laswell and Ray Hill. Sam, call the roll, please. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Motion carried? Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for all you guys do, too. Okay. And then we've got the next one, Judge, is I need to get the, uh, I'm presenting my uh, 2023 budget. 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 Yes, sir and for your consideration and approval. And that should be, I presume all of you all have a copy of this right. document. Yep. Our budget's gonna go up to $8,649,231 for 2023. Yep. Uh, and you all may know, we collected the, the taxes each year have been going up. When I first ran for sheriff, we collected the sheriff, uh, the sheriff Tinnell in 2018 collected $72 million. Mm -hmm. We collected over $100 million in taxes this year. Yes, so sir. Bullock County, is, as, as you all know, and all of you all, I'm sure, paid note of as well, we're just, you know, we're, we're growing, we're, we're booming, and, and uh, I want to thank you for, you know, all the, the direction and stuff you've given to the county to grow but that's what the budget amount is and then particularly within that uh, pursuant to CARES 64.530 subparagraph 3 the fiscal court needs to fix the annual maximum amount including fringe benefits which the sheriff may expend for deputies and assistants and the amount included which is included in that budget that we presented for uh, uh, employees and deputies and, and assistants is seven million one hundred nine thousand nine hundred thirty one dollars so uh, I'm requesting that someone make a motion to approve that amount and uh, we get that approved today um. I'll make the motion for the salaries for the Sheriff's Department at 7 million 931 for the calendar year 2023 and includes all benefits, wages, salaries, overtime, and, and, and uh, I, I know that's 
our book and uh, our first responders are there for everyone in the community. Okay. And, uh, so got a second by Fort District Magistrate Ray Hill. Sam Calro. Here, you can have this. You can have the sheet, Sam. There you go. I need to sign it, but. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Ed Chummers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. And I'll make the second motion to approve the uh, sheriff's budget for 2023 as well. And, and while I'm going to say you have one of the most competent staffs I've seen, and I've got to brag on Mr. Odie over there. He's pretty dang good at what he does. Judge, I, I've, I've tried to talk him into letting me adopt him in my he does so good. I'm proud of him as could be if he was my son. Yes, I'll sir. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion, members? Sam, call the roll, please. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Ms. Rayhill? Yes. Ed Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank, thank you. Well. Then, yes, sir. Two things, other judge. However good a job you think he does, he does better. I'll right, just tell you that. And, and, but the other thing, just to let you know, we'll be back on January the 3rd right. for approval of our general term order. And typically, uh, we do that because we have receipts that have to come in through the end of the month, and it will be an exact figure that we're asking for on January 3rd. Uh, we could have done it by an estimate that we can do it in December. We can request it in December, but if we do it then, it has to be approved as an estimate. We'll be back on the third day of January for the entire court to approve our general term order, and it'll have a specific amount in it at that time. Uh, that's all I have, sir. Thank you, Bob. And we'll see you Saturday. Thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Uh, number nine, actions requested on the waste agreement with the Zone and Fire Protection District. It's in your packet, gentlemen. Uh, Rob's reviewed it with, with their legal folks. And um, Rob, your comments, if any? Or... No, it's, it's uh, along with our directive that it's, uh, it's, it's acceptable as far as formal legality, so it's, it's ready for the court's approval. Okay. And uh, for the audience, it's uh, for the terms of uh, 20 years, $700,000 for the uh, uh, built-in uh, facilities for EMS folks. So, Sam, call the roll. Oh, I need a mo I'm going to make the motion to accept the lease. I agree. I'll second. Got a second by Magistrate uh, Laswell. Sam, call the roll. Mr. Rahel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kevin, for all that you do for us and uh, bearing with us in the last couple of years. Um, action requested to accept the bid for the remount of the 2015 ambulance to a 2023 chassis. Uh, Eric, you have some comments about that and along with your uh, price, please, sir. So we currently have standing I believe it, and you should have a paper that has the mileage for each of those ambulances on there. Mm -hmm. Most, our, our newest ambulance, 50,000, the closest one after that's 100,000. Everything else after that's reaching close to 200,000. Um, our lead time on our new ambulance is 24 months. So, I mean, it's going to be a while before we get them. We're averaging somewhere around 60,000 miles a year per ambulance. Um, so this remount that we have currently the, on, the, on your list, there's a truck on there that has 315,000 at the time. They can uh, take this, this ambulance, take the box off of it, remount it onto a new chassis, go through the box, repair anything that's broken, anything. So we get a new, basically get, we're going to get a new ambulance back. Um, I think the bid came in uh, 104,000 mm -hmm. bid. If we were to go and buy that ambulance straight out new, um, currently it's somewhere around $200,000. So obviously remounting it is, is a more economical option. Um, and so we're just requesting that we can go ahead and, and accept this and move forward. Mm -hmm. What's the lead time on this right now? 90 days. 90 days. Mm -hmm. 90 days. And he actually, the company Osage that came in with the bid, they already have the chassis setting on the lot. So there's no waiting for uh, Ford to deliver that chassis. I'll make a motion to accept the remounting bid 104 and the mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Got a 
filed a motion of 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill, a second of 3rd District Roswell to approve the bid from Osage to re remount, uh, re remount and refit our current ambulance. Um, payable upon, uh, I know Ken Ann's not here, she always likes this, but payable upon sending it out there to them. Sam Calero. Uh, Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rayhoff? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, action requested on bids for the renovations of Saltwell Road, the facility. I'd like Justin. to get the approval to accept the bids for the renovation of the removal of the flooring on the first and second floor and the installation of the new flooring. Uh, the SO contracting, I believe you have a copy of it. If you look at the top line, the 64225 only, he added additional work that we see that we would uh, do in the future. SO contracting, we've used them uh, to do the dispatch flooring as well. Mm -hmm. We're familiar with their work. It's good quality. And they did a few extra things than some of the other bids. But well, it's a little bit different. So, if I'm wrong, is it, SO, is it 86,000? It would just be the 64, 225. The 86 is for the additional work later in the year. All these other ones, apples, apples, like Harbor Floor at 52, and then they got another bid at Harbor Floor covered at 46. Correct. They did two different bids based off of the quality of the flooring. And then SO contracting, they're doing a few things extra, like the rubber on the floor, or rubber on the stairwell. Harbors did not. And the quality of the flooring lasts a little bit longer as well. It's the same flooring that dispatch has. We're just going to continue it over continue. on our side. No. For what it's the flooring that's dispatched, we've been very, very pleased with mm -hmm. the house held up. Because, I don't know, you may be over there yeah. more often than I am, so, but it, I think everybody will be very happy with it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's nice. Very nice. And then Harbins didn't quote the same floor? No. They did not. We asked, we asked them to match it as close as they could to the dispatch floor to continue it over. Mm -hmm. They said they get it as close as they could, but the, there's two different qualities that they would provide between Harbins and SO contracting. And they did not do the rubber landing on the stairwells either. Well, that's what I was saying is apples to apples. Just amount of this SO contracting, get one material and hard to afford get another. Correct. Can you ask Harvard to get that material that you like? Uh, the 56 is the closest that they could get to that type of material. They can't get the same material that SO will get. I don't know if they couldn't get it, but that's that's the best they could do, they said. So the I mean not being a butter nothing, but the bits are not are not apple size. You know what I'm saying? So your recommendation is? That's so contracting. Okay. And then the concerns of Magistrate Rayhill. I guess from, from what I hear, Magistrate, is Harbins couldn't get hard Harbins couldn't get the same material as requested. And am I correct on that? Or in so or am I mistaken? My concern is is, you know, and I don't know I just go through what my business is, is you know, that if I do apples to apples, if I get bids on the building sure. and stuff, I don't, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't care if they do extra work. The other companies ought to have the opportunity to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
this this here what I've got in front of me, and no no offense to anybody, <coughs> it doesn't tell me it does extra work. We're just paying twelve more thousand dollars for something that you know I don't know. You know so if I do it, yeah, and I send it out to three different people, and I said this is what I want to bid for, and one comes in twelve or fourteen thousand dollars cheaper, but well, they're doing the job. I don't care. If, you know, this is what you did on. You know. If they didn't have the opportunity to do the extra work or they didn't have the opportunity to give that extra work, you know, especially, you know, this is not my money, it's your money and their money, so, <clears throat> I mean, I, what, what, what were the specifications on the bid? Was it to, we just said that we were going the, the dispatch or what did Right, so it would be the removal of all the carpet and the tile on the first floor, second floor, and the stairwell to match the flooring on the dispatch side as best as they could with SO contracting already being familiar with that type of material um, I asked Harbin's as well to match it as they best as, as they could and then I think uh, Harbin's was going to put the same flooring on the stairwell SO contracting said that this would be a better Rubber. material yeah. and it lasts a lot longer and then you can see on the Harbin's, they did the two different, different quotes based off of the quality. Well, I think this thing did this quit by the inspection of the we did. That would be my recommendation is, is, you know, this is the flooring, you know, Harbin's, if they could, now if they come back and say, I can't get it, you know, you know, then they, they can't bid it. Does that make sense? Yes. This is what we want. You can't bid it, you don't bid it, you know, but you don't bid a, a product that we don't want. Okay. And I would do that if that can try to, that'd be my recommendation. Okay. I'm just making motion that we have this reality to, to back up progress, but I have it rebid apples to apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, what you want. All right. And then once we get that back, I mean, I don't mind doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, sorry, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Um, action requested to promote Kaylee Connell to assistant animal control uh, for Sir Effective. Yes. Okay. Well, we can do a motion on it, but it's turned down. So go ahead. It'd be appropriate to go ahead and have a motion to request they revisit with, with clear specifications. Got it. So that's the motion by Magistrate Ray Hill for clear specs consistent to uh, for publication again. And second, second. by Magistrate Mitchell. Sam Carlow. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Mr. Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Carey? Thank you. Um, actions requested to promote Kaylee Connell to Assistant Animal Control Officer effective December the 15th at 1715 R. Yeah. You got a second? Thank you. I have a second by First District Magistrate Mitchell. Sam Carlow. Ms. Glasswell? Yes. Mr. Rayhoff? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Actions requested on my behalf to hire Brittany Barnes as animal care attendant at 1225 an hour, effective December 15th at 2022. Uh, that employee will be replacing uh, Cheyenne Ashley. I'll second. I got a second by 4th District Magistrate Rayhill. Sam, call a roll, please. Mr. Rayhill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Actions requested to hire Kim Foster as a maintenance technician at $41,600 annual salary uh, for Parks and Recreation, uh, effective December 15th of 2022. I'm going to make that recommendation. I'll second. Got a second by Third District Magistrate Laswell. And, and, and to help you, anyway, Sam, call the roll. Sir Summers? Yes. Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rayhill? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And, and Walt, she will be with you until the date you first release her, the first week in, yes. in January. That worked good. You know, Kim does, she's done a good job for us. I think she'll do a 
find a job for you all over there. She, she will. She has the expertise that we need. Um, actions requested to promote Seb Stephanie, excuse me, I'm missing one. Action requested to hire Nicholas Perkins as a full-time EMT, EMT at 1750 an hour, effective December 15th of 2022. Second. Got a second by Magistrate Bray Hill. Sam Cole Roll. Mr. Michael? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Mr. Summers? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, actions requested to promote Stephanie Collins to full-time EMT advanced wage increase. The 1950 per hour effective December 2 of 2022. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I'll second by third district magistrate Laswell. Sam call roll, please. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mitch Summers? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And actions requested hire William Fights, EMT, from part time to full time, effective December 12 of 2022. We got a second by 4th District Magistrate Ray Hill. Sam, call roll, please. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Mr. Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, and an item that's apparently missing off of there, but we have, uh, we're moving forward in discussion with uh, Janice. Uh, we're moving into what I'm going to say more, uh, we're moving forward to objective performance review basis. And uh, we've had the scales uh, moved to where we can uh, pay people based off of performance. And um, we'd like to have the opportunity to move forward with this uh, starting financially in the fourth quarter. It'll help us retain uh, qualified EMS employees and to be able to hire from um, the outside instead of bringing someone in with 20 years of experience so then they have to start at the back of the scale we can pay them for their experience and performance they will keep them and this will stop some of the it should stop some of the uh what i'm going to say the turnstile that we have there uh, we lose folks to other agencies based off of wage uh, this way we're able to evaluate the performance this is something that this court has wanted to get to for four years in all departments, not just special DMS, but with EMS, uh, we do have the means to be able to evaluate based off of training and experience. And uh, this is uh, what we want to do moving forward. Uh, the wages you all have seen, uh, the starting pays for EMT will go to $20 an hour, and they can go all the way up uh, to a range of 30 with nine plus years of experience and uh, I'm gonna say qualifications. And it will be based like that all the way up through with the MT advanced, paramedics, and uh, all the way up the line with the qualified people that we have. That's what we did last week. But, yes, that's what we did last week. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna make that motion. And Janice, if you have any comments, I sure appreciate all your hard work on it. With what you've done, Eric, yourself, Justin, and uh, John, I'm glad to see you back. You can write some more grants if you're if you don't have to take all the medication. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? I'm gonna make the motion to accept this. Second. Got a second by Third District Magistrate Laswell. Sam Call Mr. Rahel? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Motion carried. Yes, I want thank you. Thank you. I mean the whole lot. Yeah, I don't know how you guys back here at UMS do what you do, fire departments, because, you know, you hire a gentleman or a lady and they come in, there's 30 other outfits out there that they can go work at. You know, it's it's a revolving door everywhere. All these fire departments are getting EMTs, they're getting ambulance services, and, you know, and there's a lot of cities out there that's got a lot more finances available to them so they can jump and run anytime you want you know so to be able to be competitive and to keep the good skill you know i think we have a great staff up there that can oversee everything else but they need the tools and money is the tool i mean i, I hate to say that but that is a tool where everybody looks at so to be able to be competitive 
thank you, Janice, for, for doing that. And guys back there, thank you for you know putting up with a lot of the turnover for sure. Yeah. And um, I guess at this time, Dennis, do you have any closing comments? No, I just want to thank everybody. It's been a been a road to go down and everything over the years and everything, but I appreciate it. And I, I really have enjoyed seeing the people. I really have when you look at the number of years and serve the people and everything. And I want to continue to do that. Uh, my number one concern is that I'm going to serve the Lord, take care of my family, and I'll continue on down that road. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dennis. Mr. Laswell. Yeah, I just wanted to you know what Dennis said. It's been, a, it's been an experience. <laughs> okay. Got it. Is that all, Joe? That's it. All right. Thanks to Ray Hill. I just want to thank you. It's been, a, it's been a, one of my greatest things in life to be able to serve. You know, when you, you grow up in life, and, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, you're going to be this or that. There's something inside your Lord puts inside you to be a servant. Yeah, I want it to be a manager. But to serve, you know, these everybody that does government, we don't do it for the money. I mean, they're just not there. You know, even in our EMTs and stuff, if you, there's a servant part in you that he puts inside of you, you serve wherever, coaching football, coaching kids, teaching, doing whatever you got to do, you know, that's servanthood. You know, and the greatest thing is this last four years has been a, one of the greatest, you know, experiences because everybody got along. I mean, we argue, we just disagree. The first four years here was hell, excuse my language. When, you, when you've got a court that doesn't get along, you're miserable. you got to figure out, just talking to you three, you got to figure out how to, you know, have your opinions, but to, to negotiate, to, to get along, because these people out here is what you're making decisions for. Sometimes we get a little bit uh, jaded thinking, this is my decision. I'm, I, I don't care what happens. I'm, I'm not changing my mind because you're doing it personally. You know, I had to learn the hard time between business and government because it don't make sense. It really don't. You know, when you can't go out and buy something that will benefit somebody, you have to have other 18 other people to tell you you can. You know, so whatever it takes to get along, I, I, it'll make your life so much better. You know, you've got a great boat. You've got a, something that, just like Walt said, I mean, hundred million dollars that comes into this county and that separates. I know the school gets a lot, but you know, there's, there's almost 80 or 90,000 people that you're making that decision for. And it's their money, I mean, it's, I mean, and I, I pour to you, but it was, you know, when you, I know the difference of a bad court to get a court. And I would take a good court over anything in my life. But I appreciate being here. I mean, I was, you know, you, you always say it, you know, time is time, but it's enjoyable. When you go out and everybody knows, we, you never get somebody that comes in there and tells you thank you. We, I think we did maybe, I think I counted like four times in eight years. <laughs> we don't do it for that, but that's the reason we do it, is we help. A little story is I went out and looked at this guy. He kept calling me and calling me and calling me about this pothole. And everywhere I go, I take my tax what I pay in my taxes. So this year in my house, I paid $3,000. Well, $300 went to the county, you know. But everybody out there thinks that the, that the whole $3,000 goes to us. So I go out there and I, I'm explaining to him what we're doing. And I'm drinking a cup of coffee and just having a good time. And he's, you know, he's upset the whole time. And I said, this is how much you give me. I said, how much you think it's going to take me to fix that pot? I said, do you think it's going to be more than $300 when I send a truck out here and get out here? He said, yeah. I said, well, that's what it's going to happen. But he taught me something that day. That pothole, he hits twice a day when he goes to work and when he comes home. It ain't just a pothole to him. It's his tax money being fixed. 
And I learned that, you know, it, it ain't being a million dollar building over here is just as important as that top pot on front of this gentleman's name. So any calls, and I always made a joke with him as his call me, I say, well, I'll be there around dinner time, what are you having, you know, or something like that, just to get them, you know. But serving the people is a, it's, it's one of the greatest experiences you got, if you do it right, for sure. That's all I got. Thank you, Joe. And I, I'm, I've never done this, but Rob, since this is your last go around, any comments? Opportunities. Yeah, so I said earlier, it's been, been an honor and pleasure. Uh, started working county government in 99 and been working with agencies here in one capacity or another ever since. And I'm going to continue doing that. So I'm, I'm still going to be involved, uh, both through work as well as all the volunteer service I've done. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, so I'll see most of you around still in, in one capacity or another. And I'll, Instead of sitting up here, I'll probably be standing there bugging the court and asking you all for things uh, in the years coming up, asking you all to help uh, with what we want to do with the health department moving forward. Uh, other than that, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a safe and prosperous New Year. There you go. Thank, thank you, Rob. And, and I, I guess in conclusion, this, this Saturday at 11 a.m. at the fairgrounds, we'll be swearing in the uh, uh, new fiscal court members. And uh, we have uh, Judge Sean Bush. He's a circuit uh, appeals court federal judge will be swearing us in and uh, I'd also like to take the opportunity to congratulate Bullet East on their 6A state championship I know we did some of that the last time and also the Bullet East cheer champs uh, we're putting a resolution together for the next court to be able to uh, have signs made to put up at the entrances all into the uh, second district uh, from out of Jefferson, Nelson, and even Spencer counties as well. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mayor Owen Taylor, Mayor Dangerfield, Councilwoman Preston for what you have done for us and uh, our agreements and how we've helped move your communities forward in hand in hand. And we look forward to uh, supporting and being a part of your community for the next four years. But I would like to welcome uh, Tammy Baker as the new county attorney. And uh, Vera as the new first district magistrate. Karen Johnson as the third district. And Brian as the fourth district. Uh, we look forward to uh, moving this county forward in the next four years. I mean, we have literally done so much that people have told us that we couldn't do when we started this. And we've done it, and we've worked hard. And uh, I pray that you uh, like what we've presented today, because we didn't take votes on it with this court, because we were really wanting to be transparent, showing the general public what we're doing, and to uh, not, not uh, thinking that it was going to be a done deal at the last minute. So this is where we're at, and I wish all of y'all good luck. And, and Tom, your editorials have been fair and good. We, we will see how they look in the next four years. Yeah, they, 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 they've been fair. And uh, our next court meeting will be January 3rd. And uh, we look forward to the new court. And uh, y'all have a blessed holidays. Christmas in, in particular, enjoy your families and because life is short. Any motion, Dennis, for the last time? Make this last motion and everything, for all these years and everything, I'll put the form of motion in the adjourn. And I just want to say that I enjoyed being here. Thank you for my second. We've got a motion by First District Magistrate Mitchell, a second by Fourth District Magistrate Ray Hill to adjourn the Bull County Fiscal Court of December 15th, 2022. Tom, we set a record. It's the longest court I've ever had. It is uh, 11.42. Thank you.